When we want to visually display categorical data using a chart or a graph, the most common display that we will use is called a bar chart. And I'm going to teach you how to create a bar chart for categorical data using Microsoft Excel. As before, we're using the Dog Toys data set. We will find that on the first tab of the Describing Data Week 3 Excel spreadsheet that I made for you. It's available in class or through a link in the description for this video. Let's take a look at our data. Now here we see the full data set. There were 50 dogs who were asked about how many toys they owned and what's their favorite toy. We have the breed of dog, the size of dog, which toy they chose as a reward or a thank you for participating, and how many days it took for the toy to fail. We are going to use the favorite toy choice, and we're going to create a bar chart. You will find the starting point for this bar chart here in the tab labeled bar chart. And if you want to see what we're moving toward, this is what it will look like when we get finished or at least something close to that. Let's go back to that bar chart. The first thing we are going to need if we hope to create this bar chart are some numbers for each of these favorite toys. So let me show you again how I created the frequencies. I use the count if function. So equal sign, count if, open parentheses, and I'm referring to column A, or A colon A, everything in column A comma, now count every occurrence of stuffed monkey, which is cell C2, that you find in column A. I could add a parenthesis or simply click return, and that parenthesis gets added for me. Yet another shortcut that Microsoft Excel affords us. To copy this information to the subsequent cells, I'm going to drag that first cell all the way down. And uh, just to be safe, let's be sure we get a total. So it's equal sign sum, open parentheses, the values that I want to sum and return, giving us a total of 50. And now we're ready to create our bar chart. The first thing we need to do is to grab the data points that will make up that bar chart. We're gonna do that by dragging from cell C2 to D6. Then we're going to click on Insert in the ribbon. And here we'll see the recommended charts. Now, in Excel, there are multiple ways to do pretty much anything. This is one way to get to the chart, especially if you're not sure what type of chart you want to create. Let's use the recommended options. Click on Recommended Charts, and we see several options that we could use to display our data. We want this first one, the clustered column. Simply click, and that chart is created for us. With Excel, it is important that we know how to edit things like bar charts or tables, because Excel does not give us output in APA style. For instance, APA style requires that the bars be grayscale, no additional color in APA style. Let me show you a few of the editing tricks that we could use to make this bar chart look more like the APA style that we would need for a publication. Now the first thing that I want to do is just grab this chart and drag it up here where the cell F4 is and drop it you know, right there. There's a few things in this chart that I don't need right now, like the, uh, the chart title. So I'm going to click on that chart title and uh, click delete. Now the chart title is gone and my y-axis has been adjusted accordingly, giving me more, uh, really less space at the top, filling up the available space. Uh, speaking of the y-axis, I do want to edit this. You notice that it goes all the way to 14, which is not really necessary. I double click on any of the numbers in this y-axis, opens up some axis options for me over here. And the bounce, uh, the minimum is zero, that's fine. Uh, in fact, it's usually important to anchor the y-axis at zero, but I'd like the maximum to be 12, which I think will match the available data just a little bit better. Okay, next thing I want to do is edit the bars, change the color of the bars and the width of the bars. 
I'm going to start by double clicking on any blue bar. This is going to bring up the Format Data Series tab. And I'm going to go to the Paint bucket, which gives me the fill and border that are available. The color, according to APA style, should be a gray. I'll just use this medium gray color. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, I like to put a border around the box so I could add, uh, I'll just add a solid line and I'll make that black. There we go. And the last thing that I want to do is, is change the width in between these bars. So for that, I'm going to go to the series options and the gap width. You notice I can increase or decrease this number. As I decrease, the bars get wider. I'm going to take that all the way down to 15%. 15, uh, there it is, 15%. Obviously, 16% would have worked just fine as well. Now I see an APA style chart that is much closer to what I want it to be. In fact, there is probably one other change that I can make. If I click on this, I can go to my font, change that font to Times New Roman, 12 point, and I can change the size of this bar chart just slightly. Okay, looking pretty good. You might notice about this bar chart that it is a little hard to interpret in the sense that if I ask you what is the most popular toy, you'd have to look at those bars and do some comparisons to tell which bar is the tallest. That can be fixed with something called the Pareto bar chart, and that is something I'm going to show you in our next video.